Hello children, I am Dr. Aruna Mohan from Delhi University and today I will discuss with you chemical coordination. If I say chemical, what do I mean by this? We know that coordination is done by nervous system and if we call chemical coordination, then we are meaning hormones. So chemical coordination will take place with the cooperation of hormone system and nervous system. In other words, we can say that neural system which works point to point, it will work with a rapid coordination if hormones are also there. So let us first discuss about hormonal part of chemical coordination. Before I start with hormones, let me also tell you about the endocrine glands, exocrine glands, hormones, pheromones and neurohumors. Endocrine glands are the glands which produce hormones. Endo means internal, crine means secretion. The gland with internal secretion is an endocrine gland and its secretion is called hormone. And since it is a gland of internal secretion, it will not have a duct. Hence, endocrine gland will be a ductless gland and this will also mean that hormone will be collected by blood. That means hormone is discharged to the blood not directly, but it is collected by the blood from the endocrine gland. So it reaches in the blood and then it will have its effect on the particular organ or part of the body. The secretion from endocrine gland is collected by blood, whereas secretion of exocrine gland comes out through duct and pours on to the part of the body where it is required like for example the pancreatic digestive juice will come to the duodenum through duct. So that is the difference between endocrine and exocrine gland. Coming to hormones, as we have already discussed, hormone is a secretion of an endocrine gland. Pheromone is also secretion of endocrine gland. Then what is the difference between the two? Hormone is secreted by you having effect on your body. Pheromone is secreted by you having effect on the body of other person in the form of smell, odor. That means pheromone produced by me can be smelled by you and pheromone produced by you can be smelled by me. Normally it is smelled by opposite sex. The pheromone produced by men can be smelt by female and pheromone produced by female can be smelt by men and that is why pheromones are also called sex attractant. In lower animals, the lower animal will identify sex, opposite sex by the odor. So the role of pheromone is rather finding out the partner more than the hormone which hormones will do inside the body. That is the difference between hormone and pheromone. Both are produced by endocrine glands. Coming to neurohumors, it is important to tell you the difference between hormones, pheromones and neurohumors. Why I am trying to explain you neurohumor? So that you do not confuse between hormones and neurohumors. You have some idea about synapse which is present between two nerve cells and this is a link between two nerve cells and message passes through synapse through a secretion of synapse which is called neurohumor. In our case it is acetylcholine. Acetylcholine which is a neurohumor which is produced at synapse helps in transmission of nerve impulse from nerve cell to other nerve cell. About this neurohumors we will discuss in detail when we are discussing about a nerve cell. Coming to the details of hormones, hormones are non-nutrient chemicals which act as intercellular messengers. Also hormones are produced in micro quantities in trace amounts and they are 
definitely secreted by endocrine glands and they have effect on the distant organ which are called target tissues and hormones are always site specific. I would now like to elaborate on these points. Hormones are required only in very small quantities, in micro quantities. So they are called trace elements. They are produced in trace amounts. That is one thing. They are transported in the body through blood because blood is collecting the hormone from the endocrine gland. That is another point to understand. Next point to understand is that hormone is produced by endocrine gland but it has its effect on the distant tissue, not nearby, distant, away from endocrine gland. And now that tissue in this case will be called target tissue. I will further elaborate this point. The hormone action is site specific. So it is produced by an endocrine gland but it will have its effect only on its site. I like to further elaborate it. Before I go for further elaboration, I would like to remind you children that hormone comes to blood or blood is collecting the hormone from the endocrine gland. Now when it has reached blood, blood is touching each and every part of our body. Then should this hormone act on each and every cell of our body? No. It should act only on the tissue where it needs to act, which is the site for this hormone. And hence, it is important for every hormone to be site specific. So, if it is site specific, then though it is circulating in blood round and round in our body, it will act only when it reaches the site. For example, hormone produced from pituitary called follicle stimulating hormone FSH should act only on gonads, not on any other part of the body. So when blood reaching gonad, it will act on the gonad. When blood reaching other part of the body, this hormone will not act on other tissues. So for hormone, it becomes very important that should be site specific and hormone should have the target tissue. For FSH, the target tissue is gonad and site is particular part of the gonad. So those characteristic features of hormones become handy when we come to the action of hormones. The reason being hormone is released in the blood and blood is going to each and every cell of the body and the hormone should not act on each and every cell, it should act only on the particular tissue. Hence the nature of hormone becoming site specific, having the target tissue specific nature becomes very important. This slide shows you distribution of endocrine glands in our body starting with pituitary, pineal, then two thyroids, two pairs of parathyroids. You can also see thymus at the level of heart. Then at the level of kidneys you see a pair of adrenals. There is pancreas, the endocrine part is ileto langerhans and then there are gonads ovaries and testes. Ovaries are inside the abdominal cavity of female and testes are outside the abdominal cavity in the scrotum. So if I list the endocrine glands, pituitary is present in the brain near hypothalamus, pineal is also present in the brain, thyroid is present in the neck region, parathyroids are present behind thyroid. Adrenals are conical shaped, present at the apex of kidneys. Then gonads, testes in case of men in the scrotum. Two in number, ovaries, two in number, present in the abdominal cavity of female, just under the last rib. Then pancreas, the endocrine part is ileto langerhans. Pancreas lies in the loop of duodenum. And placenta, which is also endocrine in nature, produces hormones. There are other parts in our body which also produce hormones to some extent. 
like GIT, gastrointestinal tract, our alimentary canal, also liver, kidney and placenta. We will now discuss about hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is a part of brain which controls pituitary gland. Pituitary gland is the gland which controls all other endocrine glands in the body. So, we can say that pituitary gland is a master gland, a master endocrine gland, but pituitary itself is controlled by hypothalamus. So, hypothalamus becomes important when we discuss chemical coordination, when we discuss endocrine system. Hypothalamus controls pituitary functioning in many ways. Our pituitary has different lobes, the anterior lobe, the posterior lobe, the intermediate lobe. When we come to posterior lobe or neural lobe, it is controlled directly by hypothalamus because neurosecretory cells are present in the hypothalamus. The hormones of neural lobe are secreted in the hypothalamus by neurosecretory nuclei and they are then passed on to posterior lobe of the pituitary through axons. That means control of posterior pituitary is directly in the hypothalamus because secretion itself is taking place in the hypothalamus. Coming to the anterior pituitary control, the hormones of anterior pituitary and intermediate lobe are secreted by anterior pituitary and intermediate lobe itself. Secretion does not take place in the hypothalamus in this case, but still it is under control of hypothalamus. How? The releasing factors for various hormones are present in the hypothalamus. For example, if we talk of follicle stimulating hormone FSH from the anterior pituitary, the hormone is synthesized and secreted by anterior pituitary, but the releasing factor for FSH is in the hypothalamus. So, unless releasing factor from hypothalamus reaches pituitary, the pituitary will not secrete FSH. So, releasing factor for each hormone of anterior pituitary except prolactin are present in the hypothalamus. As far as prolactin is concerned, it has inhibitory factor which is also present in the hypothalamus. Why inhibitory factor for prolactin? Because prolactin is the hormone which will cause downward contraction of uterus for delivery of the fetus or it will produce milk in the breast immediately after the third trimester of pregnancy because baby needs to drink milk. But we do not require milk in the breast or downward contraction of uterus all the time because we are not delivering fetus all the time, we are not feeding the infant all the time. So, we should not have prolactin all the time available in the body, otherwise we will have problem. Always milk in the breast, always uterus contracting downwards and hence there is inhibitory factor in the hypothalamus which keeps check on prolactin. Prolactin is not released unless there is pregnancy. When there is pregnancy, then placental hormones will inhibit the inhibitory factor. Inhibit the inhibitory factor, two negatives will make one positive. That means, prolactin will now be released and will do the needful for delivery of the fetus for production of milk in the breast. So, children you can appreciate the presence of releasing factor as well as inhibiting factor in the hypothalamus and this is how the hypothalamus is completely controlling the pituitary and anterior pituitary control takes place through portal system. It is called hypophyseal hypothalamic portal system that is through blood. With this we come to the end of this session. Thank you. Thank you.